So behind me is 24,000 watts of solar panels and a 24,000 watt commercial water heater. I am going to be heating our entire farm with PV Direct, which is photovoltaic direct water heating. The cheapest and most effective way to use photovoltaic solar panels. Let me tell you about it. So this is a conceptual video that I'm accumulating my resources to do and maybe by the end of summer I will be doing this project if not the year after but I have to fully understand what I'm doing before I do it and get all of the component deals accumulate all those resources. So I just picked this up a brand new water heater for one sixth the price of new and this one has uh, it's 24,000 watts. It has six 4,000 watt elements in this water heater, 50 US gallons. And then these solar panels are brand new, but have a slight defect, like a crack in the glass from shipping. So I got those for a quarter of the price as new ones. So these are 450 watt longy bifacial brand new solar panels. Now, the, uh, the crack in the glass doesn't matter. They're all tested for 445 watts. They were all tested. And we put them on a steep angle, like almost straight up and down, especially because I want the energy in the winter to be heating water. But what I'm doing with this is taking 24,000 watts of photovoltaic energy and wiring them directly into the thermal resistive element for heating water. So water's my battery. The cheapest part of a solar panel system is the solar panels. The expensive part is racking, charge controllers, inverters, and batteries for electricity storage. But when you wire these, so nine of them equals 4,050 watts, nine panels, a uh, string of nine panels into each one of the 4,000 watt elements in there. Whenever the sun shines, it heats water. If the sun shines full blast, it heats the water faster. If the sun is partially overcast, it still sends energy and heats the water as well. Now, the problem with this, it's only 50 US gallons, this particular tank. I was thinking about making my own tank and for literally 20 to 40 bucks, you can get uh, resistive water heating elements. They, they'll say that they're for 220 AC, but because they're a resistive uh, element for heating, you can fire DC directly into them and it'll vary as well. So this is an AC water heater, but you just switch it to run six separate strings into the six elements and heat water. The water's gonna get super hot. So I have to put a thermal switch on it with a pump and I'm gonna probably just use it IBC totes, insulate the crap out of them. And when this water is way too hot, which it will get, it'll transfer the water glycol into the insulated storage tanks. So. Uh, when I built my shop, I built everything on the farm myself, but my shop, I put in-floor heat piping in the concrete. My greenhouse, I put in-floor heat piping in the concrete. I have yet to utilize them. My buildings are actually so efficient that our heating bill is negligible. Um, for example, this winter was very mild. Only half of the winter had a carbon tax. Saskatchewan reprieved us for, since January. For the entire winter on our entire farm, our heating needs without any wood is 1500 bucks. On a typical winter, which will eventually go back into normal or even colder, let's say 2500 to $3,000 to heat. Massive shop, massive greenhouse, our house, and even an ATCO trailer. Okay, so we got four furnaces out here, and our heating bill is not much more than a standard new good size house. But uh, we're going to completely eliminate that bill. Um, I want to get off of the natural gas grid and the plant food tax grid. I don't like paying that. And I don't trust that the government will be able to provide me um, cheap, affordable energy. So I think it's necessary for us to, to worry about our own heating. What's cool about PV direct stuff. So this water heater, I'm going to fill with probably glycol, maybe just water and very simply run a circulating pump all through my concrete and all of that water and the additional tanks. 
I have to size like how much extra tank storage I need because instead of doing a shutoff that if the water gets too hot, it stops bringing energy from the panels, I want to collect as much energy as possible. So for just simple IBC tote tanks or something, uh, any additional energy, I'm going to heat just more water or glycol, right? Now, a simple circulating pump to go through my concrete. So during the day, I'm making hot water. That hot water is going through the concrete. Uh, not hot enough, I have to have a sensor on, just like you would with a boiler or a wood, uh, wood boiler or something, or a natural gas boiler. A sensor that I don't crack the concrete, make it too hot. But by day, all of my buildings don't even require heat by the day. They're all passive solar and efficient, right? So our furnaces do not run in the greenhouse shop or our house, right? But during the day, I'm heating water and I'm putting that into concrete and I'm bringing up the, the, the thermal temperature of the concrete, the water or glycol in the concrete lines, the tanks. So when nighttime comes, what I have is a whole bunch of hot water or hot glycol stored because that's my battery. The concrete's up to temperature, the water in the concrete, the whole system's up to temperature. And then all night, the concrete takes heat from your stored like water battery storage and puts it through. This is literally going to eliminate my heating bill. The system works, uh, all of my research, there's just a few technical things that I have to figure out. So 24,000 watts, that's uh, quite a bit, Two, 24 kilowatt solar panel system just for heating water, because I'm worried about heating. The expensive parts of a solar panel system is charge controllers, inverters, racking, and batteries. So I'm going to eliminate my heating bill first. And then what's cool is our standard water heaters. You can get an electric water heater, whatever size. They ha will have two elements in, typically 4,500 watt elements, one at the bottom, one at the top. What you can do with solar panels is you could take a string of 10 of these 450 watt panels to make 450 watts, mount them, 10 panels, mount them into your standard water heater, say the bottom element, and leave the top element on the grid. Or you leave whatever water heater you have in your house and get another electric water heater beside it. So cold well water for us comes in to the, the first water heater. The solar panels, whenever the sun shines, preheats and heats up that water. And then if you do need some additional water for kids showers and have a bath or something, or on a cloudy day, then you still have the grid, but you completely eliminate your need for electricity and charge controllers and inverters and all the expensive stuff by taking care of our heating needs and domestic water needs. But literally 24,000 watts is going for heating my buildings to completely eliminate our heat bill, take us off the natural gas grid. Um, and then another string of solar panels, I have some more stored are going to do our domestic hot water as well. So all of a sudden we don't barely have an electricity bill and our electricity needs went way down. So the whatever solar panel or wind turbine or system that I figure is feasible in the future, it doesn't have to be as big because we did PV direct for everything. There's other things you can do with PV direct, so photovoltaic direct. You can size the right amount of solar panels to say a water pump. So if you have a well pump for irrigation, uh, you need X amount of panels. Let's say it's a 4,500 watt big pump. You take 10 panels and you direct PV wire it into the, uh, uh, the special pump. So whenever the sun shines, it pumps a whole lot of water. Now what's interesting is I only need to heat water for heating for five or six months of the year. Uh, the rest of the year we need zero heating. So I'll have 24,000 watts of power in the summertime for six to seven months that I don't know what to do with. Some people I've seen uh, have created hydrogen generators. They'll generate hydrogen and compress it and store hydrogen tanks for cooking throughout the year and even some heating in the cold months. So all summer they're making hydrogen and then all winter they're burning hydrogen. So that's one thing. But for the farming aspect of things, I could put DC... Uh, reroute the power from this with disconnect switches and do it all safely and to code and everything, of course. But uh, 
take my strings of, so of panels, get irrigation pumps, and whenever the sun shines in the summer, when I don't need to heat any water, I can pump irrigation for all the farming activities. You can make the hydrogen, like I mentioned. You can do uh, PV direct air conditioning. They sell air conditioners that are DC or PV direct. So however much the sun shines, if it's a full sunny day, it blasts your air conditioner fully. If it's partially sunny day, it only blasts your air conditioner a little bit. So you yeah, just have to size it properly and uh, things like that. I have one of my HVAC guys is, is thinking about a system of putting a variable speed variable speed stuff on your standard AC air conditioner and making our own because the DC one seemed to be quite expensive. But if we can figure out a variable speed drive on an AC uh, typical air conditioner, then we can, in theory, just like the AC water heater, it doesn't matter if it's DC or AC on those resistive elements. Take a standard air conditioner and all summer long, cool my buildings. So it would be like a walk-in freezer in my shop if I wanted to with PV Direct. And what's nice about this is the things that are going to screw up in a solar panel system are the expensive equipment. So the charge controllers and inverters and batteries don't last very long. The cheap part is the solar panels. So literally you wire up solar panels, you put them on a rack, wire them up, so nine of them, and you have a wire, and it's actually not even that big a wire. I'm doing the calculations. I think for a 10-gauge wire, take from the string of nine panels, 10-gauge wire directly into the water heating element. And then whenever the sun shines, it heats water. It's like a foolproof system. Nothing's going to screw up on it, you know, until it, the solar panels blow away or 25 years goes by and they need to be replaced or something. So the payoff for this... Literally, so all of my buildings are very efficient in the amount of stuff we have. This went to $1,500 the entire year for the entire farm. Any of our heating needs barely used any wood. On a typical winter, let's say $2,500. Let's say if they introduce the carbon tax again, it'll be $3,000 or, or something dollars for the entire farm. So that's like four separate buildings, including a 3,000 square foot greenhouse in gardening zone three, this is our entire heating. The payoff for this, what I paid for the solar panels, the deal I got, I just found this deal, picked it up this morning, what I paid for that, the wire I already have, the MC4 connectors I already have, I have to figure out an economical racking system, and then it's a few thermal uh, sensors, disconnects some electrical components, relatively cheap stuff, and circulating pumps. I have the manifolds for my in-floor heat, Keep it as simple as I possibly can, but also have the uh, fail safes for if I the water gets way too hot. I'm thinking for ten thousand dollars, even less. This whole system can take the farm heating complete off grid. Okay, what's the payoff on that? Four years. How long does this last? Probably twenty five years, maybe longer. Right? Like if the solar panels lose lose efficiency like who cares over that time i was thinking because i haven't utilized all this in-floor heat in concrete uh, slabs i didn't want a natural gas boiler system because i knew i was going to do something and natural gas boilers are really expensive so i was looking at wood boilers okay what about a wood boiler you you put wood in and it heats water and it has thermal sensors that you don't uh, crack your concrete with too much heat and those wood boilers are cost more than this system. And then I'm stuck all winter long stoking a wood boiler. Now, we live in the prairies where uh, I'm, I don't have a forested area exactly close by. So firewood we use is a cruddy poplar material. You could like bale up s straw and burn straw in these wood boilers or something. Or have to haul firewood deal with firewood, split firewood. The wood boiler doesn't last forever. You, maybe, maybe those will last 25 years if you take care of them, and then those have to be replaced anyways too. So instead of having to stoke firewood every day all winter long for the same amount of money, I'm going to hook this up, and it's going to work better. And no maintenance, no firewood, no nothing, and that's about as good as it gets. And a four-year payoff sounds pretty good to me.
So again, sorry, I'm just one guy. I only have time for one epic innovative project per year. So this is just a conceptual thing that I'm talking about for this. What I see in the future, actually, the amount we need with three boys, it's more important for me to finish my barn completely. We're getting our cattle, actually, this weekend. So i got to finish the barn, get our food production, because that costs us $20,000 a year if we had to buy any sort of half-decent uh, food for our family in Canada, right? And our heating bill is literally this winter $1,500 a year. So it's more important for me to finish that. I'm prioritizing. But if I get that system done and the fencing I need to get done and water bowls and stuff like that, that's another thing. PV Direct water bowl heating to de-ice the water during the winter where I live for livestock. So cool, PV Direct stuff. Now this system, for some reason, it's not as popular. I've been doing some major, major research. This absolutely works. So the government's saying we've got to switch everybody to electric heat pumps. Those don't work when it gets down to minus 25 at all. It doesn't work, and it gets colder here. And they're really not efficient when it gets below only minus 10 Celsius, is what I'm told by the professionals, not the politicians. This actually works. Geothermal. Well, geothermal heat pumps work. Oh, they do. Are they efficient? Absolutely not. Okay, so you can put a $100,000 geothermal system in with a heat pump so you get some of the heat from the earth instead of just like outside or the ambient air or whatever. Where I live, it's too cold. That doesn't work. So if you put geothermal in, you'll waste $100,000 on this geothermal system that comes with a massive electricity bill. So that's a stupid idea. This works. Passive solar design works and for the additional things that I need over and above passive solar design, like my greenhouse shop and house and super insulation buildings, the a little bit extra I need, PV direct water heater as the storage. Now during the day, I don't need any heat at all because the, the sunshine is heating all of my buildings almost all the time in the winter. So our furnaces don't run during the day, greenhouse shop and house. You can get electric baseboard heaters or electric construction heaters and hook it up to PV Direct like that. So whenever the sun shines, it makes electricity and you send it to the heater and it gives off heat. The problem with that is I don't need any heat during the day. So what I want to do is use these thermal resistive elements to heat water and have water as the battery for me to use at night. Sun shines by day, heats the water. At nighttime, the heat... Uh, from the water gets put into the concrete in the buildings and repeat the process day after day. That's the best use of solar panels that I can possibly see. It actually makes financial sense. And why it's not more popular, why there isn't more information on this, is beyond me. Stay tuned. I will obviously YouTube this whole procedure. I figure out, I think I'm going to use drill stem for my rackings from the oil field just because it's cheap. Uh, it's expensive to do racking, so I'm going to do it as economically as possible. This whole project is economically as possible so that everyone can do it with quite literally a payoff like under five years. And then you have free heat for, you know, till you need to replace the solar panels or water heater or something. So thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Again, sorry, not doing the massive project, conceptual design, collecting resources, because I'm only one guy and... I only got so many epic projects for videos in me. So thanks for watching. Take care.